All right, I wanted to go over um, one more uh, version of creating a pattern. So um, this pattern, it just gets offset. So this first row goes here, the second row goes here, you know, and then so on. So you can kind of see that. And the way that it's being done is we have, I've polar arrayed one of the curves in Rhino. So if I uh, preview this, it's just that guy right there. We can also do it in Grasshopper. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and then what I've done in Grasshopper is use this triangular grid, which if I do Control Alt, press my left mouse button, it's under Vector right there. Um, triangular grid, or you can type in triangular grid. Um, and it gives us a grid, and it also gives us points with the grid as an output. So if I preview that, we get points. And so what we can do is take this original curve that we containered here and put a bounding box around it, right? And just get the area of that bounding box, which gives us a point in the middle, in the center of that bounding box. And then we can use this orient right here to take the points from the triangular grid, so all of these points, and take the center from this curve and place it on as the source and place it on all those points. And then it just takes the geometry, right? So here's the geometry, the point in the middle of the geometry, and then the point for the curves. Now the one thing you do have to do, and we kind of talked about this before, is I'm going to undo this graft. If I undo the graft, um, it's taking the first version of these and just going through the process and not the second and third version um, for each one of these uh, lists. But if we come in and take these points and graft them, it now takes these and runs every single one of these through every single one of those points. Um, so you either have to graft one or the other um, to get it to run through and give you all of the points. Uh, all of the separate curves on every single point. Um, so that's a little bit of something you have to do with the multiple, like with the polar array. Um, so once we get to that point, then I wanted to show you a couple of other things that you might want to think about doing. Um, one is you could scale this guy. So if I take this uh, scale geometry, it's just taking that curve and scaling it, I can push that into here right and now I can control kind of the scale of this guy so if I make it grow or smaller where it kind of overlaps a little bit right um, maybe the slider could be a little bit less it's at 10 let's just put it at 2 right right and so now we have a little bit more granular control over that and so you can you know kind of play with that you could do a rotate Notice that the scale is using the same centroid, so it's going through and doing it for each one at its center, so it doesn't scale all of them and make it all bigger. It scales each one individually. Um, and then down here, what you can start to do, these are just some options. There's this region union, so if I preview this and turn off the rest of this stuff, so get rid of the preview here, it actually unions all of those curves, right? Now I had to flatten them. Um, it was a list of lists. So if I don't flatten them, right, it'll do each individual one. But if I flatten them, it will do all of them and puts it in one big list. So you get that. And then if you come in and start to play around with the scale, right it'll get smaller or if you start to overlap it a whole bunch you'll start to get a different kind of pattern right um, and then some other things that you can do as well this little node here is a hatch and what it's doing is it's breaking this list up into the first second and third curves and if I hatch this so if I come in and preview this Right, it's hatching that whole thing. Now if I remove this one, right now it's only hatching two of them. Now if I remove this one, it's only hatching one of them. Um, so you can, I'm, and I'm adding with the shift key, holding down the shift key, right? And so, um, so now you're kind of getting 
that process. Um, so you can actually do multiple things. And then it's possible that you can come in uh, with the hatch here. And so if I um, bake this hatch, right, I can set that hatch to a separate layer, obviously. Um, so I think we were using extra light, right? Click OK. So now the hatch will be on extra light. And then if I do the um, bake this guy, I'll bake that onto the cut, right? And then maybe I'll bake this guy, which is all of them. So if I preview, preview this guy, it's all of them, right? I can actually bake that onto, let's do, how about, try to pick something. Well, we'll just do the, um, cut section detail okay for that one and now if I go to Rhino let's pull Grasshopper over here for a minute right if I come in and let's go ahead and set layer 1 to default if I turn off the cut layer oh and let's unpreview I'm gonna preview off all of this right so there I have my um, the section detail Right, so let me make this bigger so you can see it. Pull that over. So there's the cut off, right? There's the section detail off. There's the section detail on. And then I also have my hatch on a separate layer so you can start to do something like that, which I think would be interesting. Um, I'll go through and um, show you each one of these steps. Um, but this is just sort of an intro. You might be able to get through it from this guy, but um, we'll do it um, step by step.